We're going to declare war against ISIS. We have to with, wipe out ISIS. These are people that with chop troops on the ground. Uh, I am going to have very few troops on the ground. How are we going to take the oil? How are we going to do that? Just you would leave a certain group behind, and you would take various sections where they have the oil. I'm joined now by Nayara Hawk, former State Department spokesperson and senior advisor. So, Nayara, that was an interesting montage. Let's unpack that just a little bit. When Donald Trump has said repeatedly that he would go in and he would solve the crisis uh, with ISIS by taking Iraq's oil and then bombing the oil fields in Iraq and Syria and then having Exxon rebuild it. Hmm, Rex Tillerson is about to be uh, his Secretary of State, who's the CEO of Exxon. That's convenient. What does that kind of talk how does that resound in the Middle East? Well, it resounds quite well with his base here in the United States, right? It's a very simple message that people can grasp onto. There's something bad going on in the world, and we're going to hit back hard. Unfortunately, it, overseas, uh, and the way reality works uh, in, in, in the international order, think solutions are a little bit more complex than that. And, for example, just saying that uh, bombing oil fields in Iraq is going to stop the ISIS problem. Well, we have actually, the United States and our coalition have been bombing uh, in Iraq and in Syria, ISIS strategic points, and that's part of the problem is as they're losing organizational control in Iraq and Syria, they're spreading out into Europe. So it's actually created by operating in a traditional warfare. We've actually increased the problem and the challenge to directly Western targets. Yeah. So this is part of the nuance uh, and understanding that's necessary. Unfortunately, it seems like the president-elect is far more interested in pandering to his base and uh, making some broad statements and actually offering uh, solutions to the problem. And one of the other solutions that he's talked about is giving a lot more latitude to Russia, but it's Russia's uh, bombing of Aleppo and the devastation there that at least, from what we can tell, contributed to the gunman who went and killed the Russian ambassador. So the exporting of, uh, of terrorism and anger is, is tied in some ways to what Russia's doing. How, does, how will that work? And Russia's playing a similar game as well. They're, they're telling their people and uh, that, and they're telling the rest of the world as well, that the reason they are involved in Syria is because they are attacking terrorist targets. Well, what we know, as we've seen just from the images, they're, they're, the Russians have partnered with Assad to oppress what would be a civil, uh, what's actually a civil war, and oppressing and killing millions of uh, people, uh, child, men, women, and children. Yeah. So this is part of the information communication campaign, which Trump is, seems to be uh, doing quite well on that front. But the communication effort isn't translating, as we can, far as we can see, yep. into anything tactical on the ground that's and, going to deliver results. Very quickly, you've had this now alignment with these far-right parties in Europe, the neo-Nazis now marching in Germany. How does this alignment with sort of that kind of Christian versus Islam uh, sort of that kind of rhetoric, how does that impact very quickly? Well, I think there's two, two parts to that. Um, we see, also see that General Flynn has met with some far-right nationalists and from folks uh, from Austria. So there, there's clearly an interest in working with these folks to uh, address this war. But the challenge challenges by, by calling it a holy war, you're legitimizing what ISIS is trying to do. You're giving them the credit that would go normally to a faith, rather than saying they are inhumane, yep. they are terrorists. Yeah. You're giving it the credibility they want, and frankly, they want to be at war yeah. with the civilized world, and we'd be catering to it if we look at it in that lens. Yeah, instead of looking at the fact that this was a, somebody with obviously a long criminal background that we saw uh, for, uh, in these Berlin attacks. Thank you so much, Nayara Hawk. Appreciate it. And up next,